Hello everyone and welcome to today's English lesson. My name is Anna, Anna English to be exact. Yes, English is my middle name, which is funny because I am English. I live here in England and at the moment I'm broadcasting to you live from London. So, hello if you are joining me for the first time, wonderful. If you are here to improve your English, then you are definitely in the right place. I produce many videos, all free, especially for you. So before you leave today, make sure you press subscribe and that bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. And if you're returning to me, as many of you do on a regular basis, hello again, and I hope you're feeling well. Give me a shout out in the comments box below if you haven't already. Tell me where you're watching from and how you're feeling today. In London, we have quite grey weather today. It's overcast and it's a little bit windy. So it feels like autumn, not like summer, which is unfortunate. But I'm here to make everyone feel happy and try to forget about the horrible summer weather. <laughs> So, let me say a quick hello to my patrons who are in the Skype room. Hello patrons, how are you? Who do I have joining me? I have Letty, Andreas, I have Christina and Eric. If there's any other patrons there in the patron Skype group, then do say hello. And uh, let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger so that people can actually see. Is that gonna help? Yeah, like that. There we go. Wonderful. So, I've got people in from the Netherlands, Algeria, Russia, um, where else? Where else? Bristol. Fabulous. That's not very far from London at all. Uh, Brazil, Colombia. Hello. Wonderful. I've got people in from all over the world. That makes me very, very happy. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to work through my notes that I've made, especially for you. Um, we'll work through these notes, we'll probably add to the notes as we go through. And then at the end I will open up to questions. So feel free to comment as you go along, but um, I won't answer any specific questions right now. I'll leave that till the very end so that if you're not watching this live, you don't have to put up with loads of um, comments that you can't see. So if you have any comments or questions, save them to the end and I'll give you a chance at the end of the lesson to ask me some questions. Um, the only exception is my patrons. Patrons, of course, you always get top priority. So if you have questions as we go through, then put them in the Skype room and I will keep checking in on you throughout the lesson. Of course, anyone who wants to sponsor this lesson with a super chat, and all sponsorship money goes towards helping the growth of this channel. So if you want to sponsor this channel, it could be with anything from a dollar or, or anything. It could be a tiny amount, tiny amount of sponsorship. Your comment will then stand out and I will email you a copy of these notes at the end so that you have something to work with after the lesson has finished. But if not, then don't worry. This lesson is absolutely free. All I ask is that you show me a thumb give this video a thumb up and that you're a subscriber. So just click that subscribe button. So crime and punishment, let's get going. So crime and punishment. We don't do a crime or make a crime. When we're talking about crime, we talk about committing a crime, committing a crime. So um, if I do a crime, I would say, I have committed a crime. Um, of course, I would never commit a crime. I, um, I might have committed a driving offence. So, yes, technically I might have broken the law once or twice, but I would never intentionally commit a crime. Um, have you ever committed a crime? Do, 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 do. Have any of you been naughty and committed a crime? So we always use this word, so remember that word when talking about crime, it's very, very important. We could also say to break the law, to break the law. So I would say I have never committed a crime and I have never 
broken the law. Talking in the past, I have never broken the law. I will never in future break the law. I will never commit a crime. We could also call someone, oh, I'm not finished that one, a lawbreaker um, or law abiding. So you are a lawbreaker. So let's put this in brackets here. Are you a lawbreaker? Question mark. So a lawbreaker is someone who breaks the law. Are you a lawbreaker? Or you might say, um, I am, I am a law-abiding citizen. Oh, how do you spell citizen? Citizen, citizen, like that. I am a law-abiding citizen. You'll hear these phrases a lot. I am a law-abiding citizen. This means someone who does not break the law. Are you law-abiding? Are you a law-abiding citizen? I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm a good girl. Um, Superwoman says, I have never broken the law. Good, you are a law-abiding citizen, Superwoman. Well done. Fantastic. Thomas says, lawbreakers must go to jail. That's right, lawbreakers are criminals. They must go to jail. Good, okay, so back to the notes. We have um, this phrase you might hear quite a lot, especially in films, or as Americans would say, movies, to take the law into your own hands. Has anyone ever heard this before? To take the law into your own hands. So if you take the law into your own hands, it means that you don't allow the, um, the police officers, the detectives to do their job or you don't think they're doing a very good job, so you go and try to deliver justice instead. Obviously, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to go out and fight crime um, or chase criminals. We're not supposed to. That's, that's the job of a police officer, detectives, investigators. Um, but in many films, you'll see a victim of a crime will get very upset and very impassioned and they don't have faith in the police service so they take the law into their own hands and they go and try and fight the criminals themselves. So to take the law into your own hands. Now I will just say now as we're talking about this subject be very careful in the chat room because if you say anything offensive or rude, then my moderator is online, hello, um, and he is watching all the comments. And if anyone puts anything that's inappropriate or rude to the rest of the community, then you will be removed. So if you don't want to make so just be very mindful of what you write there. All right, uh, how are my patrons getting on? Any messages here? Oh, we have got messages here. So Eric has said, Nice dress. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Um, do you know that there is a book um, with the same name written by, and I can't say this name, Dostovsky. Dostovsky. Yes, uh, Crime and Punishment. I know of that book. I haven't read it, but I know of it. Good. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like the dress. So let's carry on with the notes. So we have... The kinds of people that you might talk about when you're discussing a crime. So, we have a suspect. A suspect. A suspect is a person suspected of committing a crime. So if I walk into the house and the house is a mess and you're looking in the corner, sheepish. This is a word, have you heard this? Sheepish. You look like a sheep. Meh. <laughs> if you look sheepish, you look kind of shy and like you've done something wrong. I don't know what happened to look sheepish. So if I walk in and the house is a mess and you look sheepish in the corner and I say, who made all this mess? And you say, I don't know. I will suspect because you look sheepish, I will suspect you have made the mess. 
So you are a suspect to me in the crime that is my messy house. Okay, obviously I'm being a little bit silly, but a suspect is someone you suspect of make, um, committing a crime. So a suspect, suspect. Notice the slight difference in pronunciation, a suspect. He is a suspect. She is a suspect. Suspect. And then as a verb, I suspect you, I suspect you, suspect, suspect. I make that first vowel, when I make it a verb, I make the first vowel more of a schwa, s, s. I suspect you, I suspect you. When it's a noun, a suspect is more of a a. Uh. I a suspect is suspected. A suspect is suspected. Good. Okay. Those of you who are leaving, Harrison, um, anyone else? Bye. Come back later and watch the watch the video a little later on. Because we've got lots of good stuff to go through. Okay. So let's carry on. So we've talked about suspects. And we have obviously the criminal. A criminal is a person who commits a crime. Now there are other names that we you might hear to describe the criminal. You might hear the word perpetrator. Perpetrator. Let me just give you that pronunciation so you can see it. Perpetrator. 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 In America, they call this, they shorten it to perp, the perp. But in Britain, we'd say the full word perpetrator. Perpetrator. Um, so a perpetrator, you'd use the word perpetrator if you don't yet know who the criminal is or if you're not allowed to say the name of the person so if you're a police officer and you have someone in custody, if you've arrested someone but you're not legally allowed to say the name to anybody, you'd say the perpetrator. So the person who you suspect of committing the crime, the perpetrator. You might also refer to the criminal as a crook. Uh, you wouldn't hear this in uh, the news. This is um, more informal, a crook. Someone who is crooked. They are not straight. They don't play by the rules. They are crooked. A crook. Um, you might also hear a culprit. The culprit. Very similar to perpetrator. The culprit got away. Who is the culprit? But culprit can also be an animal. Um, for example, a few days ago, I opened my front door in the morning. I was on my way out and there were there was food all over my garden path in front of my house. Lots of dirty, rotten food was like all across the path. And I was like, ah, I need to go. But there's all this dirty, rotten food on my garden path. Who did it? Who is the culprit? And in fact, I know very well who did it. It's the local fox. So a fox is like a dog, a wild dog. And here in London, we have a big problem with foxes going into our bins, pulling out our rubbish, searching for food, and they rip bags open all over the, all over the pavement. And they did it in my garden. So there was dirty food all over the pavement, and the culprit was the fox. So I wouldn't call him a criminal, Mr. Fox, because it's not a crime, but it's something that he did. He was, the, he was responsible for this act. He was the culprit. Um, we also might talk about the offender. The offender. You'll hear that a lot in the news. And criminals can also be referred to, less often, but you might hear it, a lawbreaker. They're referred to as a lawbreaker. Um, yes. Good. Okay. So one of you had a question that I thought was quite appropriate. Um, what is suspicious? To be suspicious is to have a belief that someone has done something. So I'm suspicious. So I believe something else has happened that I that isn't yet apparent. Or if somebody is acting suspiciously, 
then they're behaving in a strange way that suggests they're not telling you the truth. If you are, sus if you are acting suspiciously or you're a suspicious person, a suspicious looking person, then it means there's something going on that you can see that tells you they're not telling the truth. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but to act suspiciously is to just act in a strange way. Okay, I hope that helps. All right, let's carry on, shall we? How are my patrons doing? All good? Oh, a jailbird, that's a good suggestion, Eric, yes. Um, a jailbird, I think a jailbird refers to someone who's been in jail or, or who is in jail. Okay, we, I don't hear it very often. So, we've talked about the suspect and then the criminal. And then obviously on the other side, you have the victim of a crime. You'll hear this phrase a lot. He is the victim of a crime. And that is a person harmed, injured or killed as a result of a crime. Now, you could be the victim of a crime even if you have, um, if your car has been stolen. Of course, you weren't physically harmed, but you, um, your life has been harmed. Your finances have been harmed and maybe emotionally you've been harmed. I have been the victim of crime on a number of occasions. Have you ever been a victim of a crime? If you have, let me know. Tell me in the comments. Have you ever been a victim of a crime? I've been the victim of a crime. I had my bike stolen. I felt like this. I had my car broken into and the contents, the things that were inside my car, the contents of my car were stolen. And they ruined the locks as well on my car. I had to pay a lot of money to get the locks fixed. Um, what else have I had? Um, ba, ba, ba. Oh, I've, I can't remember, but I have been a victim of a crime. As, oh, I had some jewellery stolen. So someone came into my house and stole my jewellery. What a horrible person. <laughs> anyway, I don't mind. It's all done now. It's all in the past. Water under the bridge. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, so yes, have you ever been the victim of a crime? Do let me know. Um, so that's a victim of a crime. An accomplice. Here's a word that you might not be familiar with. An accomplice. Have you ever been an accomplice to a crime? An accomplice, we can use this when talking about a crime or we can use this when talking about something that's not so major. So for example, if um, if you have two dogs and one dog, uh, one dog has been chewing up the furniture and the other dog is waiting at the door to see when the owners are coming home. And when the owners come home, the other dog goes woof woof and tells the dog, stop chewing, the owners are home. That dog who let the other dog know the owners were home, that dog is the accomplice. So you could say, were you an accomplice to this crime? Hmm. Is he your accomplice? So an accomplice is a person that helps the criminal to commit their crime. So they can help them during the crime. It might be simply someone who drives the car. So if you drive the getaway car, you didn't rob the bank, but you drove the car. You helped the criminals to get away or to arrive at the scene. Um, an accomplice might also be someone who had nothing to do with the crime or the planning of the crime, but afterwards they learn about the crime that was committed. They know the criminal who committed the crime and they maybe help to hide that person. And that's called to harbour a criminal. If you help and protect someone from being caught, you harbour them. You harbour them. So to harbour a criminal makes you an accomplice to the crime. Does, am I explaining this okay? I hope so. Okay. So let's carry on. So we have also, of course, a police officer. A police officer, whenever there's a crime, a police officer, a police officer will be there to um, investigate, to enforce the law. And um, this is a person who enforces the law, who keeps the law and makes sure that 
and the law-abiding citizens are protected. Um, our police officers do a fantastic job here in the UK. How are the police officers in your country? Um, now we have men and women who work for the police. Um, they work on the police force, we call it a force. So we have men and women who are police officers, but you might individually call them a police man for a man or a police woman for a woman. But you can refer to all of them as police officers. So if you're calling one over, you could just say, uh, police officer, police officer, excuse me, and then ask for help that way. So, um, Erwi says policeman and police officer have totally different meanings. Please do explain. Tell me more. And remember, um, there are differences between the UK and America as well when it comes to law enforcement and vocabulary. Um, okay, so um, some of you are asking for these notes. Now, just remember, I, you might have missed the beginning, but these notes are available to anyone who supports the channel. So if you support the channel um, with a super chat, so you sponsor this particular lesson and all that sponsorship goes towards helping this channel to grow, then I will gladly email over these notes to anyone dropping a super chat of any amount. It can be as small or as large as you're willing to donate. So um, that's how you get hold of the notes if you are interested. Yes, so police officers are sometimes referred to as cops, but that is very, very American. You will hear it here in the, in the UK because we have a lot of American terms here, um, but um, um, cops is American, but we will call them cops as well. So let's carry on. So you'll also have um, a lawyer. So a lawyer is a person who is licensed, sorry, who is a licensed legal practitioner. So someone who has trained and has proof of training because they've passed their exams and they are licensed um, in the law. So they know the law very, very well and they're able to give legal advice. They can help you with the law because the law is very, very complicated. So, um, a person who is licensed, a licensed legal practitioner qualified to give legal advice. Now, you'll hear the phrase solicitor, you might hear the phrase barrister as well. Both of these are lawyers. They're all lawyers. So, a solicitor is a lawyer, but a solicitor would usually deal with smaller cases. So if you, and, if you or I got involved in a small crime, say we were, um, something was stolen from us or our house was broken into or um, we were assaulted or we were kidnapped, then we would use a solicitor. If it's a bigger crime, um, maybe it involves um, people of a higher rank, so maybe someone in parliament or someone with a lot of money, or a, I don't know, if it's a big crime, if it's a really well-documented big crime, then you would have a barrister. A barrister deals with major cases, um, high-profile cases, and solicitors deal with the minor cases or the smaller cases. Okay? Um, okay, so let's carry on. We also have a detective. A detective. Um, oh, so a good questions come through. One of you's asked, what's the difference in pronunciation between the police, like a police officer, and please, please. So I'm asking you politely, I'm using the word please, please. See how I go straight into the E, please, please. But then when I'm talking about an officer, I say police, and it goes into a short S sound. Please, long E and a Z, please do it, please, and please, please. There's no long E and it's an S. Please, please. The police say please. The police say please. Hope that helped you. Um, one of you has mentioned an attorney. An attorney is an American term, okay? And one of you is asking about super chats. Super chats are um, little button. It's a little button next to the emoji button. 
it's got a little dollar sign on and that's how you can get involved with super chats just there okay so one of you has said what about witnesses you're absolutely right i have spoken about witnesses further down but let's put it on here as well oh well, let's take it off um let's take it off the italics we don't want that a witness so a witness ooh, is a person a person who sees or rather witnesses a crime so they see the crime happening so they're someone who can give information about what has happened to the police or the detectives a witness have you have you ever witnessed a crime have you ever witnessed a crime um, have I ever witnessed a crime? I'm sure I have, but for the life of me, I can't remember right now. <laughs> I've had such an interesting life. So many things have happened to me. All right, let's carry on, shall we? Um, let's carry on. So, the axe. So, here's, here are the actual crimes. Now, I'm sure there are... A couple more that I haven't included here but these are the main ones that I could think of all right so we have to abduct abduct now notice we have B and D this doesn't happen very often but we need to make sure we sound both of them abduct 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 to be abducted or to abduct someone is to take a person away so take them away like from their home but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be out of the home you could take them from work but you keep them away mm -hmm. oh I'm messing up my format here so to take a person away from their home using force or deceit so um, and holding them against their will usually for an unknown reason so, for example, children tend to be abducted quite often. So they are the victim of abduction. You might hear abduction. Um, so a child would be abducted, usually by deceit. So somebody might approach a child and say, Hey, do you want to see my puppy? I've got some puppies in the car. Or would you like some sweets? I have lots of sweets in my van. And the child will go to the van. They'll get in the van. There are no sweets. And the person, for whatever reason, will take that child away. Now, abduction doesn't just refer to children. Of course, you can abduct an animal. You can abduct uh, an adult or a child. So, abductions. Uh, to be abducted. To abduct. One of you has asked about the word bobbies, referring to police. In London, are they called bobbies? Well, we, we do in England say bobbies on the beat. So police officers doing their rounds, but we don't really say it. Not really. We know about it, but we don't really use it. So to abduct. Hopefully none of you have experienced an abduction. We sometimes talk about being abduct abducted by aliens. So someone might say to you, have you been abducted by aliens? Um, or... If someone doesn't turn up when you expect them to, you're like, where, where are they? And you might say, I don't know, probably been abducted by aliens. So it's just a silly comment to say they've probably been taken away by aliens. Who knows? Um, okay, so um, one of you asking, what do we do if we witness a crime? I'm going to come on to that later in the lesson. So just stay tuned and we'll cover how you react to a crime. So you also hear the word kidnap. To kidnap is very similar to abduct. To kidnap is to abduct someone, to take them away using force or deceit. Um, but this time it is for a ransom. So you abduct someone for an unknown reason. You take them for no reason that is known. But if you kidnap someone it's because you want something in return. So you're going to hold them hostage until you get what you want. So if I want, um, I don't know, if I want a million pounds, 
<laughs> if I want a million pounds, I would take someone who is important, like, I don't know, um, uh, Lionel Richie. I would kidnap Lionel Richie, who brings music to the world. I would kidnap him and I would say, you don't get Lionel Richie back until you give me a million pounds, okay? So no more dancing on the ceiling until I get a million pounds. And that is kidnapping. That's not abduction, that's kidnapping because I'm asking for something in return. I'm asking for money in return for Lionel Richie. However, you don't always do it for money. Sometimes you kidnap because you want um, you want to get prisoners released. So I've heard this on the news. Sometimes someone is kidnapped because they want some other suspects or prisoners to be released from prison. This happens a lot. I hear about it a lot. So they'll say, you don't get Lionel Richie back until you release these prisoners, Mr. X and Mr. Y and Mr. Z. Release them and then you'll get Lionel Richie, Lionel Richie back and you can go on dancing on the ceiling, okay? Um, there possibly are other reasons, other types of ransoms, but those are the main ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Thomas says, kidnappers are not polite. No, they are not polite. No criminals are polite, I don't think. It's not nice. So the other type of uh, crime that you could commit is arson. So to commit arson is to set fire to a property on purpose. Of course, some fires are set off by accident. Maybe someone is smoking a cigarette and they fall asleep and the cigarette falls and sets fire to something. But if it's arson, then it means you've set fire to it on purpose. You've set fire to it on purpose. So I purposely burnt down my factory so that I could claim insurance. That's normally why people commit arson. They do it either to claim insurance, um, to maybe to um, get revenge on somebody or to destroy the competition. So if I had an English school and if I was a bad person and the English school down the road was doing better than my English school, I could set fire to that English school to make sure that they don't take any more students and all the students come to me instead. So that would be an act of arson. I would be committing arson. Of course, I wouldn't do that because, well, I don't have an English school and B, I'm not a bad person, so I wouldn't do that. That would be terrible. But arson, arson, okay? So the next type of crime you could commit is assault, assault. So this is like oh, assault, 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 with that dark L. Assault. Assault. To commit assault is to hurt somebody. So you hurt somebody on purpose. And we're talking about physically. So if I punch someone, kick someone, push someone, um, stab someone, um, do anything that hurts them physically, that is assault. Um, there are some different types of assault. So you can cause... Um, let me see if I can remember. You have um, GBH. So that refers to, uh, oh, can someone Google this actually? GBH, grievous, grie grievous bodily harm, I think it is. Um, and there's another BH, which I can't remember what it stands for. So you've got GBH, um, oh, ABH is another one, which is actual bodily harm. So that's when you actually cause um, an actual injury. So if you punch someone and break their arm, that's ABH, I think. Can someone just look this up for me? And GBH stands for something like grieve, grievous, grievous bodily harm. If someone just checks that for me, um, that would be really helpful. Okay, probably time to look at my patrons. How are you guys getting on? Um, once I was hypnotized by a gypsy woman and I gave her all the money I had on me. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and you've mentioned felon as another word for um, a criminal, but a felon is American, I think. I, I don't 
I don't hear that in the UK, so I think felon must be American. I've heard it in movies. So actual body harm, actual body, actual bodily harm, and grievous bodily harm. Okay, well let's carry on. Hopefully someone will look that up for me and just check those two for me. So the next thing we're coming on to is burglary. Burglary. Now burglary, I was interested to find this out actually because I thought burglary was simply stealing. Just stealing. But apparently not. So even I've learned something new today. Burglary is literally the unlawful, un unlawfully entering a property with the intent, so you intend to commit a crime. So unlawfully entering a property with the intent of committing a crime. So it's not even breaking in. If I walk into, um, if I go into the back door of a restaurant, I'm not supposed to. That's where the, the, the staff go in, the chef the manager, the, wait, the waiting staff, they all go in the back door. It's open so that the staff can come and go. I'm not supposed to be there, so I'm unlawfully entering. I didn't break anything to get in, but I entered and I wasn't supposed to. So if I unlawfully enter and in my mind I want to and I intend to commit a crime, maybe arson, set fire to the restaurant, maybe I'm going to steal something, maybe I'm going to hurt someone, or to vandalise the property, that is considered burglary. Even if I don't do it, the intention and the entering, that intention of doing it, is considered burglary. Isn't that interesting? I just thought it was stealing. So we've all learnt something, hopefully, today. Um, so GBH is a more ser is more serious and can even be escalated to attempted murder. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for looking that up for me. So GBH is more serious. GBH and ABH. GBH more serious. Those are all forms of assault. There we go. Um, so, so burglary. Entering a place where you're not supposed to go with the intent of committing a crime. Um, how do you know that they had an intent... Well, if you walk into a building with um, with a huge... If you go into a building you're not supposed to be in and you have a balaclava on, so you can only see through the eye holes and you're all disguised and maybe you have a big empty bag and in the bag you have some tools for breaking into a safe, for example, if you're breaking into a bank, then you obviously have intent to steal. If you go into um, a factory that you're not supposed to be in with... Um, with enough, like with gasoline and matches that are obviously there to set a fire, then you're obviously intending to cause damage or to create a fire, which is arson. So I, I'm, not, I'm not a detective, but I'm sure there are ways to understand whether someone has intent to do something or not. Um, it's like if you get caught in a place and you're about to steal, but you haven't yet left. You haven't stolen anything because you haven't left the property. But if you have a big TV in your hands, then you're obviously trying to steal it, you know? Anyway, let's carry on. So, burglary. Then let's talk about theft. So, theft is stealing. It's taking something that doesn't belong to you. I have been the victim of um, a theft on a few occasions, and I was very upset about it. It's not nice when someone steals from you. Um, then you can also talk about a robbery. A robbery is like theft, taking something that doesn't belong to you, but we use robbery when you've, you've taken something using force or the threat of force. So for example, if I walk into a shop and I see a Mars bar, you know, a chocolate bar, a Mars bar on the side and I want it, but I don't have any money or I don't want to pay for it, if I just take it and put it in my pocket and walk out, that is theft. I just took it. It didn't belong to me. It's theft. I am a thief because I've taken it. If I take my... I don't know. Let me see. If I do this... Hang on. If I, if I go up to the shopkeeper and go... Or if I hide it under something like this... 
If I do this, go, hey, give me a Mars bar. <laughs> give me a Mars bar now. They might think that this is a gun. I mean, it, it could be. So I am threatening them, or they think I'm threatening them with violence. Or if I take my banana and hit him in the head with it, and while he's dazed, I take the Mars bar and run away, then I'm a robber and I have committed a robbery because I used violence or the threat of violence to steal. Okay? Uh, thank you. Yeah, Zahir says you have a beautiful dress. Thank you very much. Um, I like the colour. I know it's not my colour, my colour being red, but I thought something different today. So, I hope that makes it clear the difference between theft and robbery, which I again didn't know until today actually. Um, uh, a theft is just to take something that doesn't belong to you and a robbery is to take it using violent force or to take it threatening force, saying, I will hit you with my banana if you don't give me a Mars bar. Okay. All right, let's carry on. Um, if you're here, by the way, and this is your first time here and you're not yet subscribed, then please do press subscribe. And if you're finding this interesting, then please do click the thumb up button. And it would really mean the world to me if you, um, right now, if you click the share button and share this on one of your social media platforms. Um, I'm always just trying to provide as much free English and education as I can to as many people as possible, but I need your help to let everybody know what I'm doing here. I'm threatening you with a banana. Press the share button and share this, or I'll throw a banana at you. No, I won't really, I'm only playing. I love you all, because you're all wonderful. So let's move on from um, robbing with a banana. Let's go on to um, armed robbery. So armed robbery, is robbery, robbing with an actual weapon. So I guess that would mean that robbery using force would be like to punch someone or to use your brute strength or to threaten them with a weapon that is maybe a banana. But an armed robbery normally, it's normally firearms. So it's to rob using a weapon, but normally firearms, oh, where's that gone? There it is normally firearms or maybe a big knife or something. Okay. Um, Iwa says, what is to mug? To mug. That's an interesting question, actually. Um, let me have a quick look because I would say that m to mug someone is to, is the same as kind of robbery. Um, to, yes, it is. Um, to attack and rob someone. So to mug them is to attack someone. So physically, you physically attack them and then you take what you want. Normally, people get mugged in the street. So normally, people who have something stolen in the street, we call it a mugging. Um, we have a lot of muggings in London. Uh, London isn't a terribly dangerous place, but you have to be aware when you're out on the streets. Um, I wouldn't go out with my phone in my hand, like, hi, I've got a phone. I'm always a bit more careful. You know, I hold it closer to me and keep a good hold of it and keep my handbag tight because someone could just run up, punch me and take my handbag and that would be a mugging. They would have mugged me or you could say they robbed me. All right, hopefully that will never happen. Um, so we have an armed robbery, we talked about that. Okay, and then we come on to really unpleasant, um, really unpleasant stuff. We're talking about child abuse. So to have child abuse. Child abuse is to in, is injuring a child on purpose. So obviously not very um, nice to do at all. We should protect our children. But some, in some cases, people do try to hurt children. And that is a case of child abuse. Um, then we have domestic violence, also um, a crime that is committed far too often. Um, domestic violence is physical assault which occurs in the home. Now, I'm not talking about a stranger breaking in and hurting you. This is referring to someone who lives in the house with you. So domestic violence normally happens between married couples, unmarried couples, between... Um, between family members, 
so domestic violence. It happens within the home with people who know each other and are supposed to love each other, but they hurt each other. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so one of you is saying, if you don't want to miss the live lessons in future, make sure you have turned on the notifications. You can turn on the notifications by pressing the little bell button. It just tells YouTube that you want to be notified when I'm live, which at the moment is every weekday. Yay! Okay, so domestic violence. I hope that makes sense. Um, we've, let me just quickly check on my patrons. Everything okay? What's happening here? So, um, oh, you checked it for me. Great. So it is grievous bodily harm and actual bodily harm. So Christina, brilliant. Thank you for that. Right, so we have drugs or human trafficking. So if we're talking about trafficking, it basically means trading illegal drugs or trading people illegally. Obviously, nobody owns people, so you shouldn't be able to trade them. So it's an, an illegal act. But to trade drugs or trade people illegally is called trafficking. Trafficking. And it is a huge problem at the moment, which is very, very sad. Um, so let's carry on. Smuggling. Smuggling is bringing products, to bring products, drugs or perhaps diamonds or maybe other things, in and out of a country illegally. So to bring products in and out of a country illegally. So if a, if a product is banned, maybe, um, for example, cocaine is an illegal drug, probably everywhere, but definitely here, cocaine is illegal. And if I go to, I don't know, I don't know, if I cop if I across to France, and I meet someone and I buy some cocaine and I decide I want to bring it back here. Um, and the act of taking that cocaine across the border into a country where it's illegal, it's illegal in France as well, but if I take it into a country, I'm taking it across the border, then I'm smuggling. Smuggling. Okay? So smuggling is to take an illegal product across borders when it's not allowed when it's prohibited. Um, then we have false imprisonment. So that's to hold someone against their will. And you'll also hear this referred to as to take a hostage. If I take someone against their will and I hold them, I'm taking them hostage. Now, it would normally be if I go into a shop and um, I don't know, why, why would I do it? For whatever reason, I decide I'm not going to let anybody out of the shop. I've got my banana and I'm not afraid to use it. No one is leaving this shop, all right, until I get a hundred Mars bars. So this person who is shopping today is going to stay in this shop until I get a hundred Mars bars. Do you understand? And that is to take a hostage, to hold people against their will, to take a hostage. Uh, then we have the word fraud. So fraud is a crime. Fraud is a crime that uh, a lot of people commit and it's lying for financial gain. So many people commit fraud. So for example, um, a company might cook the books. Do you remember that expression from when we did our cooking lesson? Um, to cook the books is to change all the figures to say we didn't earn that much so say a company earns a hundred thousand pounds but when they're doing their accounts and they're writing everything down they say oh we only earned eighty thousand pounds so that they can get away with not paying taxes on twenty thousand pounds of their money so they gain financially by lying and this is called fraud so to commit fraud. <laughs> you like the banana, do you? <laughs> I think people like the banana. Okay, good. Uh, how are you, patrons? Are we all right here? Yep, no more messages. Okay, let's carry on. Um, so we have to hack. You probably heard this a lot. There's been a lot of instances recently of hacking. Lots of hacking going on. So to hack is to gain unauthorized access to data. Unauthorized access to data. So if somebody 
comes onto my computer and they um, manage to get past my passwords that protect my data and they get into my computer and they manage to come live on my YouTube channel and be like, hey guys, I'm taking over Anna's YouTube channel and I have all Anna's data, I know all her passwords and that is hacking to get access unauthorized. Um, and hacking is a big problem obviously these days because we all live in a very digital reliant age. We're all living on the internet now. Um, we do the banking on the internet, we do our training on the internet, we do our communicating for everything really on the internet. <laughs> okay, um, let's carry on. So to hack, you are a hacker if you hack. Um, you also might hijack. To hijack, 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 is to gain control of an aircraft or a vehicle, um, unauthorized. So to gain unauthorized, so to gain control, um, let's put it here, unauthorized. Notice how in British English we spell this with an S, but in American English they spell this with a Z. Just something to be aware of. So, to gain unauthor unauthorized control of an aircraft or a vehicle. Um, yeah, so like, yeah, there's a lots, of, there was one recently, I can't remember where it was. There's lots of instances where planes have been hijacked and maybe the people have been um, kept hostage. So they've, they've been falsely imprisoned in the plane. They make the plane land somewhere and they keep all the passengers on the plane until they get what they want. They have a ransom demand. Um, so to hijack, to gain control, I think that one's pretty straightforward. Then, obviously, a very, very serious, serious crime is to commit murder. To commit murder. And this is to take someone's life or to kill someone. Now, there are different types of murder that you might hear spoken about in the news. We have premeditated murder. And this is to, um, to plan a murder. Then we have unpremeditated murder, and this is to um, this is to um, murder without planning. So it was uh, something that just came about. Like uh, an unpremeditated murder would be you're having an argument with someone. You're, you're just having an argument with someone. You you get really really angry and you throw the banana, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, this isn't a funny thing, we throw a banana at them and the banana kills them. And we're like, I wanna kill you, right now I'm angry with you and I, I kill you with a banana. That is an unpremeditated murder. It happened in, this, in that moment. It was a decision I took in that moment, not an accident. So this is the difference, it's not an accident. If I decide I'm gonna kill you right now, I didn't want to kill you five minutes ago, but right now I want to kill you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shove this banana in your throat so you can't breathe, I'm going to murder you. I didn't plan it, it just, I just got so angry, and the banana was right there, ready for me to use. That's unpremeditated murder. Now, if, I threw the banana at you in anger, but I didn't mean to murder you, I didn't want you to die, then that would be called manslaughter. So that's accidental, accidental, like that, accidental murder. So it's a complete accident. I just threw the banana in anger and it killed you. Oops, a daisy. And then you have attempted murder. So, um, when you try to murder, but you, oh, hang on. When you try to, let's write it like this, unsuccessfully. When you try to unsuccessfully murder someone, so you try to murder them, but they survive, and you're like, oh, they survived. That was attempted murder, and you will now go to prison for attempted murder. 
And thankfully, the person that you tried to kill is still alive. Okay. Um, <laughs> Stunning Lad 1, very good joke. Stunning Lad 1 has said, Did you hear about the guy arrested for stealing luggage? The police say it was an open and shut case. <laughs> I do actually like that joke. That's very funny. In fact, I'm going to add that joke to the very end of these notes because I think that is very good. Thank you for sharing. Let's stick that on here. Um, where is it? Stick that at the end. Joke. And we'll just take off the wah wah wahs. Wah wah wah. Amazing. I love it. Thanks for sharing. Um, Zahir says, I'm sleepy, but I don't want to leave. Don't leave us, Zahir. Stay here. Stay here, Zahir. Uh, where are we up to? So murder. Um, so we've talked about attempted murder. Genocide. Genocide is when you, um, when you murder many people. When you murder many people at once. So to commit, to commit genocide. Um, so if you exploded a bomb, for example, um, that would be genocide. Euthanasia. Euthanasia. Shall I just give you the uh, pronunciation of that? You, like you. Euthanasia. Euthanasia. Euthanasia is to kill someone because you think that's the kindest thing to do. Because maybe they're very, very ill and you want to help them end their suffering. Um, to kill someone out of kindness for their benefit. So normally if someone's very poorly, you would euthanize them. They, they might want to die because they're in a lot of pain. They're very ill. And so they might say, please just put an end to this. And so to euthanize, to, to end their life, because that's what they want. Um, it's not legal here in the UK, but in some countries, not so far away, actually, I think you can. Um, it is legal um, under the right circumstances. Um, also, um, you might euthanize someone, perhaps if you're in a very, very bad situation. Maybe you're in a war-torn place or you're in a situation where you've been taken hostage and you think that um, you think that the the bad people who are keeping you hostage are going to really hurt you and torture you and kill you in the end anyway you might decide to euthanize your loved ones so give them a, a, a tablet or something that puts them to sleep forever to save them from a bad experience. So these are these are examples of when euthanasia might happen. Um, yes, these are awful things, awful things to talk about, but good to know what the words are, okay? Then of course, um, something that is always in the news at the moment, an awful thing, um, but that has been going on for many, many years, and will probably continue to go on for many years, is terrorism. It's always being talked about. These are acts of violence with political aims. So um, if a, a particular group of people want to achieve something politically, they want some form of change politically or in the world, then they would, they would commit acts of violence in order to um, try to to create that change. So they would commit an act of terrorism. Then we have white collar crime. Now, to be honest, I've never really heard this phrase, but um, it's on many lists. White collar crime, obviously it happens. I just don't hear about it very often. And this is breaking the law in business. So if you break business laws, then this is a white collar crime. Okay, so I'm just having some water getting a little bit thirsty talking so much. Now we have a few less, um, or what's the word? They're not so major crimes, so, so minor crimes. Here are some minor crimes. They're not as serious. We have shoplifting. Shoplifting is to steal from a shop. It's just stealing. Stealing from a shop. 
stealing from a shop. So that's me walking into a shop, putting a Mars bar in my pocket and walking out shoplifting. Um, you also may hear about pickpocketing. You'll be told if you go into big cities like London, beware of pickpocketers. Pickpocketers pickpocketing you. Um, so to be pickpocketed means that someone has put their hands in your pocket when you weren't looking and they've taken something. So this is stealing from someone's pocket. And you won't know about it until later when you put your hand in your pocket and you go, oh no, where is my phone? Or oh no, where is my wallet? I don't know. And then you might have vandalism. So vandalism, to vandalize, to vandalize is to damage, destroy or deface property. So to deface is to make it look bad. Um, so why is it not called pocket picking, says Marco. Uh, that's a really good point. I don't know. I don't know. That would make more sense, right? So uh, to vandalize something, usually you'll see, you'll see like people with spray cans and they're doing graffiti and they're spraying writing on things. So if I go up to someone's car, maybe um, my enemy, someone I don't like, I don't really have any enemies. I like most people really, I think. I take a spray can to my enemy and I go and I write, I hate you or write some nasty rude word on their car. Then I have just vandalized his car. I've just vandalized his car because I defaced it. I've damaged it by spraying this paint on it. Or if I put a stone through a, a rock through someone's window, I'm vandalizing a property. Um, okay, let's carry on. Oh gosh, this lesson is a very long lesson. <laughs> Apologies for this. I hope, I hope that you're still all finding this interesting and engaging. Um, so what happens if you are caught or what happens if a crime occurs. If a crime is committed, then someone will report it. So to report a crime is the action of telling the police that a crime has happened. You report it. So someone will report it to the police. If it is a serious crime, they will call 999. So if you witness a crime and it's a serious crime, the first thing you'll do is phone 999 and say, hello, um, can I have the police please? Yes, I've just seen someone be assaulted or um, I've just seen a factory, um, it's been set on fire, it's in flames right now, please send someone quickly. You call 999. If it's a less serious crime like shoplifting or... Um, pickpocketing, if you've been pickpocketed, you realize that you've had your phone stolen but you don't know when it happened, you might not phone 999 because it's not an emergency, but you'd phone your local police station or alert a local police officer. In London, there's police officers everywhere. So you say, excuse me, someone stole my phone, what do I do? And they will hopefully help you. Um, <laughs> okay, so, um, once you phone 999, a response unit may be sent. So a response unit it refers to a police car or a group of police officers who are responsible for responding to crime being reported. So a response unit, they usually arrive very quickly. A response unit may be sent. Police officers will attend the scene of the crime these are phrases that we use often, to attend the scene of a crime. This means they will just be at the scene where it happened. The scene of a crime, the place where it happened. They will gather evidence. To gather evidence is to, to make a note of or collect all the evidence that points towards what happened. So it might be a weapon if someone was hurt, it would be a weapon. If um, it's a burglary or something, then they might take DNA evidence. They might look for footprints or fingerprints or um, blood. They might take it so that they can later find out who it belongs to and use it as evidence. Okay. Um, and then the police, after gathering evidence, will also take statements. 
So a statement is literally your story. So if you witness something or if you are the victim of a crime, you will give a statement. So you tell them your story with as much detail as you can remember. And here I've mentioned witnesses. They will gather evidence and take statements from witnesses. At this point, the perpetrator, remember, perpetrator is another word for the criminal. The perpetrators will have probably run away. So by the time the police get there, the perpetrators will probably have run away. If not, then the police may make some arrests. So if the police catch a perpetrator or someone they think is the criminal, they suspect of being a criminal, they might arrest them. They might arrest them and put them in handcuffs and push them into the back of the police car and take them away. Um, or they might ask a person to accompany them to the station. So if they found you at the scene of a crime, you said, I had nothing to do with it, but they suspect that you might. They might say, right, we're not going to arrest you because they have no reason to. We're not going to arrest you, but would you accompany us to the station for questioning? And you should probably always say yes, because if you say no, then they will then probably arrest you for some reason. So they will ask you to accompany them to the police station. Um, if they see someone running from the scene, then they may start to chase. And in the UK, and I know also in America, they have lots of programs which show police chases because police, police chases are quite exciting. Um, so a police chase can be done on foot. So that's with police officers literally running after the perpetrator or the suspect. Police chases often happen in cars where there'll be high, it'll be called a high speed police chase or a high speed car chase. Sometimes they're using dogs. They'll have dogs used specially trained for sniffing out people and drugs and things like that. So they'll take the dogs because the dogs can run fast and bring the suspects to the floor. Um, or sometimes they even use helicopters to find a person who is running away from a scene of a crime. Um, good, let's carry on. At this police station, witnesses and suspects will be questioned. They'll be questioned or they might use the word interviewed. Interviewed. Sometimes this interview is recorded. A detective will be assigned. So a detective, um, in the police station, it'll be a police detective, so someone who works for the police. A detective is someone who solves crimes. So they gather evidence and they try to piece it all together. So they try to work out who, who did it and what exactly happened. So a detective, his job is to gather the evidence and work out what happened and who's responsible. There are private detectives as well, but in this case, we're talking about police detectives. Um, so a detective will be assigned to the case to investigate. Once they decide who is responsible, then the suspect will be charged. So when you are charged, that means they officially point the finger and say, we think you did it. And now you're going to get into trouble. Now is going to go to court. So normally, um, someone who is charged, it will go to a court for the court or the judge to decide their punishment. In big cases, these court hearings, so a court case is heard in court, that's the verb we use, a case is heard. Um, in big cases, these court hearings can take days, weeks, or even months to conclude. Conclude is another word for finish. So you might, these high profile cases, like the case of OJ Simpson, for example, went on for a very long time. Oh, bless. Thank you, Strong Whit. Thank you so much. You've just sponsored this video with two euros. Thank you. That's really kind of you. And of course, in return for your generous donation, 
you will be receiving the notes to this lesson. So um, stay to the end and I'll tell you how you get hold of those notes. Although you've donated Super Chats before, so I'm sure you already know what to do. Um, but thank you very much, that's, that's much appreciated. So carrying on, some of these cases will take a long time to conclude, like the O.J. Simpson case, for example, that took months until they decided who, um, whether he was guilty or not. Um, sometimes there is a jury. So if it's a big case, then they might call a jury, which is a group, I think it's 12 people on a jury. I don't know the details, but a jury is um, a group of men and women from all different types of um, backgrounds. They come together and they sit and they decide, they listen to all the evidence and they decide who is responsible or if the person who is charged, whether they are guilty or not. Um, and sometimes it takes them a long time to make that decision. Um, so, every person who is charged will have access to legal advice. So remember, they'd have access to a licensed lawyer. While the accused is awaiting a trial, so before it goes to court, sometimes it takes months before a trial is heard or weeks, and they don't want to wait in prison. So depending on how serious the crime is, they may be released from the police station on bail. So to be released on bail is, um, bail is basically like giving a deposit. So you pay money and this money you will get back as long as you turn up to all your court hearings. So you pay a deposit and it's normally a lot of money. It's normally a lot of money to make sure that you don't then just run away or leave the country. And usually what they'll do is take your passport away from you as well so you can't leave the country. But you pay this deposit and when the court hearings are finished you get that money back. So you released on bail. Um, some people in some cases are put under house arrest. House arrest is to mean, I, I don't know why some people are put on house arrest and some people aren't. It tends to be high profile people, but to be on house arrest means you have to stay at home. I mean, <laughs> it's hardly punishment, is it? You're under arrest, but you don't have to stay in a horrible police cell or jail cell. You stay at home. You just can't leave your house. Um, I never really understood house arrest, but some people, if they're very ill, maybe they were shot in, um, in the crime that they were committed. Maybe they were committing. Maybe they were shot and they're injured and they have to be in hospital. So they would be under hospital order. So they'd have a police officer standing outside of their room and they're not allowed to leave and they're under constant watch. They're under hospital order. So, how are my patrons getting on? Any more questions here? No, very quiet patrons today. Goodness, maybe it's too late. Um, so, let's talk about punishment. This is only a very short section and then we're nearly finished. And just before I do that, shall we see how many thumbs we've got? How many thumbs? And did anyone share? Did anyone share this lesson on social media? If you did, let me know and I'll give you a shout out. Um, so, we've got 150 thumbs. Boom! I love you guys. Thank you so much. That's really cool. Thank you. Okay, so tell me, did you share this lesson on social media? Let me give you a shout out if you did share it. <clears throat> Just say shared and tell me where you shared it, like Twitter, Facebook, um, some other social platform that I don't know about. Tell me and I'll shout you out. But while I'm waiting for you to do that, I will, um, I will talk about punishment. <clears throat> so depending on the severity, so how bad, Depending on the severity of the crime, the criminal will be punished with one of the following. They might get a fine, so they'll have to pay a set amount of money. So you received a fine. You might have to do community service. And community service is working a number of unpaid hours within the community. So community service is normally things like cleaning, so picking up litter from the side of the motorway or, um, I don't know, painting buildings. So manual jobs that people don't really want to do. And you have to do, it might be that you get given 120 hours. So you have to work 120 hours unpaid for the community. So community service. Um, and then you might have to serve time is another thing you might have to do. 
You might have to serve time, which means you have to go to prison or jail. We say prison here in the UK more often, to go to prison. Um, or you may be ordered to go to rehabilitation, um, where you go through a rehab program. Maybe it's to do with drugs or something like that. And then, of course, we have the joke. Did you hear about the guy that was arrested for stealing luggage? Please say it was an open and shut case. <laughs> Very funny. Good. Okay, so shout outs on the way. Did you share it? Um, hi, Refat. You shared on Skype. Thank you very much. That's awesome. Stunning Lad One, you're always such a wonderful participant in these sessions. You have shared it on Google Plus. Thank you very much. Um, and I think only two of you shared it. Okay, well, thank you guys. Thank you very much. There's your shout out. Um, okay, so now is the time. I'm gonna stay on for another five minutes. Now is the time for you to ask your questions. So if I didn't answer your question earlier, you have a chance now to try and get my attention. Um, for um, Strong Whip, you sent me that super chat. All you have to do now is send me your email address. Just drop me an email. You know my email, Strong Whip. Just drop me an email and I will send you these notes um, at some point later this evening. Um, if you do want these notes and you're willing to drop a super chat, then you have five minutes in which to do it. Once this lesson closes, the super chat function is turned off. So if you want these notes, then do it now. Otherwise, you'll lose your opportunity. Of course, certain patrons also get the notes as well. So depending on your level of patronage, you get the notes. And for those of you who don't know what patronage is, Patronage is a way to support this community. So my mission is to provide English language to as many people in the world as possible, no matter what your background or what your circumstances. Some people can afford English lessons, some people can't. I want to help everybody. So I do as much for you for free as I can. But of course, when I work full time for nothing, it's very hard to live and survive. It's hard to make the channel better. It's hard to buy the equipment and everything I need to keep improving these lessons for everybody. So patrons are people who help me to build this community, help me to improve this community for everybody to enjoy. So a huge thank you to my patrons. All of you are a massive asset to English Like a Native. In particular, my biggest patrons, Yuya, Paolo, Ruben, Andreas, Vincenzo, Ibola and Ola, thank you. Um, um, you are incredible, I really appreciate it. If you feel like you would want to get involved with the patron team, then you can join us, links in the description of this video, you're more than welcome, and in response you will get rewarded. There are lots of rewards for my patrons, so you can go and check those out on the Patreon page. See if you want to be um, involved. If you can't afford um, a super chat and you can't afford to be a patron, that's absolutely fine. I don't expect it, I really don't. All I ask is that you um, give thumbs up to my lessons, that you watch the videos, and there are hundreds of videos now on this channel. So do go and take a look at some of the other lessons that I've previously done. And some of you, if you are able to, I would love if you could provide your language to my videos. So if you helped me with translations, even if it's just translating a title or a description, or if you can give the time translating the subtitles for a video, maybe one, maybe two, maybe all of them. Um, if you can do that, that would help so much the people in your country to access these lessons. You can do that by clicking the link in the description below for translations. And for those of you who've already offered translations, thank you so much. I published them all, so thank you. That really is so kind of you and generous for you to give your time. So the next lesson tomorrow is at, what time? Five o'clock, same time tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a pronunciation lesson, of course, as I do most Tuesdays. So hopefully you will join me for that one. Um, <clears throat> Uh, thank you guys for joining me, all of you being very polite. Uh, a lesson on crime idioms, says Stunning Lad One. Yes, I can do that. Um, avoid blah blah blah. Oh yes, in terms of crime, I hope that everyone here would be good and not naughty and not commit crime. I don't think I need to say that, but hopefully we're all good. Because if you're not, 
you know what happens. You will get the banana. You'll get the banana, you'll get put in banana prison. Um, <laughs> good. It has been a very silly lesson. I'm really thankful for you guys joining me. Um, great. Uh, good. Okay, well, there's no other questions coming through. Let me just check what my patrons are saying. Um, is it correct if we are saying work unpaid hours in instead of within the community? Yes, it's fine to say in the community. To work unpaid hours in the community, it's absolutely fine, Christina. So, yeah, no problems with that one. Um, crimes are bad, but sometimes crimes change the history. Well, yeah, yeah. Guess you have to judge it for yourself. Is it right or is it wrong? Uh, <laughs> Louis, the banana again. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I like the banana. Um... To attend is to be present. Yes, if you attend something, you are present. Like if I attend a meeting, I am present at the meeting. Okay. Um, can you pronounce present? There you go. Present. Z. Z. Present. Present. So it's a voiced S. Z. Like a Z. Okay. Well, guys, I have some more private teaching to do now. So I'm going to go rest my voice for 20 minutes before my lesson and um, I hope to see you all again tomorrow at five o'clock. Thank you so much for joining me and tomorrow in the morning you have a very special lesson. Um, well actually it's you watching me doing a lesson. Tomorrow in the morning I'll be releasing the first of the giveaway videos. Do you remember I did a giveaway for you to teach me your language and I've been learning lots of languages with some of my audience members that won that giveaway. I've learned Chinese. I learned, I learned a little Chinese. And so that video of me learning Chinese will be released in the morning. So do look out for that one. And then I'll be live again at five o'clock tomorrow. Okay. All right, my darlings, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being so pleasant and supportive of your English Like a Native community. Um, it really warms my heart to see it all and see all of you. So have a very wonderful evening. Not a very wonderful evening. Have a very pleasant evening or have a wonderful evening. Um, and I hope you all have a lovely night's sleep and see you bright and early in the morning for my learning Chinese video. All right, lots of love from London. Mwah, mwah, mwah.